Yes, my dear brothers and sisters, I am Catholic and I am alive. This is how we begin this evening's session. That is the Monday special when we dedicate it to canon law and scripture. Today, we want to do something about being Catholic and alive and whether they are extras that the church have. Shall we pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious and ever-living Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, entrusted the continuation of his kingdom to the apostles, and through them, through an unbroken line of succession, we have been privileged, O oh God, to share this part of your kingdom in your church. Grant each and every one of us that in professing our faith today, we may make Jesus and his gospel the center of our lives. Enable us, O oh God, to be proud of what we profess and live what we profess for salvation one day. For we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends, welcome. I want to welcome each and every one of us to a session like this where we deal with Catholic for today. For once, I'd love to speak Catholic. What extra does the church have? As we saw from the song, which I'd love to play again for us, for the sake of those who came late, which I will do very soon afterwards, would love to look at something as a way of introduction. Then we would come back again at the song, okay? Now, what extras or what extra does the church have? Does the church have any extras? Now you see that in this part of the question, I have put extra in quotes. What do I mean? Does the church really have extras? This is what a lot of us believe. What extras does the church have? Now, there is an expression that says, similar and the same. Are they similar or the same? Are they similar or the same? When two things are similar, do they make it the same? Because for so many of us, for us, it is just, do you go to church? Yes, I go to church. And it means that, oh, once you go to church, every church is a church. Well, it is all called church, but I think you know that there are differences. It is necessary that we look at some differences for ourselves today. You trivialize time when you don't know what to do with it. This is an expression. When you trivialize time, when, when for you, time is just the same way with expressions. For some people, well, it is just semantics, it's just a name. This one is this, this one is that. But it's necessary that we... There are people who are very particular in life about their titles, about their names. But when it comes to religious things, they are not so bothered. They don't mind that on a Sunday morning, when they are supposed to attend mass, they will just have sit behind the TV and say, oh, I had mass, or I had this, or because for you, you are so trivial in your approach to religion, not because you are sick, not because you are truly prevented, but for you, having mass on TV or going to another church for a funeral and not being able to attend mass is just the same. After all, you were able to hear the word of God. So it is the same. Is that what it means to you? Now, today I want us to challenge and what makes with the difference in us. Now, many people have heard from Revelation chapter 22 that says that I testify to everyone who hears that who hears the word of prophecy of this book. If anyone adds to them, God will, God will add to him the plagues that is written in this book. So some have quoted and said that because of that, nobody is to add anything. Therefore, 
why is it that the Catholic Church has added so many books or to its Bible and things like that? This is what we are going to be looking at for today. Again, this is the last one for the intro is that all scripture is breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for good work. Therefore, for some people, this is the basis of what they call sola scriptura. That means the Bible alone. Now, I want to ask you, when it is written or when Paul wrote, all scripture is breathed from God, what did Paul mean? Was Paul referring to the New Testament when he mentioned scripture? Or was Paul referring at that time to the Old Testament? What was scripture for Paul? Did Paul know about the New Testament? So when you say that sola scriptura, quoting this one, what are you talking about? Are you saying that even the, the whole of the New Testament will not qualify? Because by that time, it was not considered to be part of scripture. This is the way I want to introduce ourselves for today. And we will want to be looking at the extras of the Catholic Church. Does the Catholic Church have extra? Or is it that it is others who have taken away? This is how I challenge us. And you know, the song that I used for the beginning, I am Catholic and I am alive. That is how that, I just want you to listen to the song again as we come back again to it. Then I just look at some extras that we have. Come back again 
I am Catholic and I am alive. And uh, I talk about that fact that many, many people think that in the Catholic Church, people have added or the popes have added to so many things. But you know, that is the very funny aspect of it, of, of, of it all. For over 1,500 years, the church has existed as the church. And within those periods, it has only used one teaching. And then now, afterwards, we are being told that we have rather added to it. Has it? Is it not rather people who have taken away? But that is not the point. I'm not here to argue with anybody. I'm just wanting to whip up the faith of anybody who calls himself also a Catholic. So you know the difference. Don't trivialize things. Don't go by people who say that, hey, Catholic Church has added something to it. It has never added. Ask yourself, my dear brother, when it comes to especially scripture, when it comes to especially scripture, and ask yourself, how do you know that the New Testament should be part of scripture? Where is it written that Exodus, uh, Matthew, Luke, and John should be part of the four gospels? Who decided that the gospels have to be four? Who decided that the, these books had to be part of the New Testament? Have you asked yourself, where did the Bible come from? Who are those who kept the, them together and made it into that which you say that nobody should add and nobody should take away? It is the church, the Catholic church. That which St. Paul says in 1 Timothy chapter, 1 Timothy, you know, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, he says that all scripture is inspired by God and useful for scriptures. And I'm asking you, when Paul says that all scripture, what does he mean by all scripture? At that time, did he know about Revelation? Did Paul know about John? Did Paul know about all those things? They were not written even at the time. So when Paul was saying all scripture is inspired, what was he really referring to? Is it not that some were added to it? Who put these books and things together? It is the church. The church that put it together cannot be said to have extras. That's why I put extra in quotes because that is what popular teaching says that it has added, but rather it did not add anything. So I ask, why is it that when you are going to buy a Bible, you don't just care, you buy any Bible, even when it is 63 books, 73 books, or even 80. By the way, did you know that some Bibles are 80 books? Yes, some Bibles are 80 books. Typical Bibles that you find most of the time is a 66 book. Some people even call their New Testament you know, books the Bible. But when you talk about the Bible, scripture full of it, you are talking about the complete, the New Testament and the Old Testament. And what do I mean? Is it 66 or, six, or 73 books? Why is it so? Has somebody added or has somebody taken away? These are simple things that you need to add. This is what you think that it is an extra, but my dear, it is not an extra. It is how it has been. 73 books has always been how it has been added. Ask yourself, some time ago, we used to call those other books apocrypha. Still, it, people call it that way. Those books that who's a second, you know, that is that the, the apocrypha that means that they, they 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 are doubtful or something like that. Okay, no, these are deuterocanonical books. So when you are going to buy a Bible, why do you just buy any Bible? Why don't you think and ask and find out which is which one should you do? Next one. Teaching authority. Wow, teaching authority. As the Bible, as the church got extras. Well, if you want, if you choose to call it so, but when it comes to authority in matters of faith and morals, we would like to look at scripture, would like to look at tradition, would like to look at the magisterium. What is scripture? Scripture is the codified, the codified part of what? Of, of the word of God that we have. But apart from that, even if you read from First uh, Corinthians chapter, chapter 11, you know, St. Paul talking about what he received. He says, this is the tradition that I received from 
that I also transmit unto you. Where, which tradition was it? Where, where was it written? Where did he get it from? You see, this actually over the years, there has been a systematic, consistent way by which things have been done. Then we have what we call the magisterium. The magisterium is the constant teaching authority of the church where you deal with where you deal with the, 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 the authority, the infallibility of the Holy Father when he teaches in ex, when he teaches ex cathedra. That means that sitting and teaching us, you know, uh, from all, even the teachings of the ecumenical council. Maybe questions will come out of that. Today is just a provocation. Today is just a provocation. When, what, how do you see yourself? Is this an extra? It has never been the extra. This is how it is the magisterium of the church that made Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John part of it. So when you say you reject the magisterium, the teaching, the tradition of the church, ask yourself, how do you know? That's my big question. How do you know that this book of scripture had to be part of it? Where is it written in the Bible? It is the church's using of its word, authority that Christ gave it. Again, now, many, many people are there. You go for service or you go for mass. I love it when I see a lot of, a lot of times when there are funeral, you know, masses, they would write funeral service or they write wedding mass service. Is it a service or a mass? Well, there is the service aspect of it, but it is a mass. Not just a mass, it is a sacrifice. And when there is a sacrifice, you need a priest. Wow, these are things that are nice. So you need, so when you are, would you just love to go for a service or you like to go for a service that has got a sacrifice? What in Catholic terms we will call the liturgy of the word and the liturgy of the Eucharist. In the part of the, you need a priest. Again, we look at the Catholic extra, so-called extra. Is it seven sacraments or three sacraments? Most churches or other people would love to say three sacraments, maybe if, even if they would want to see a sacrament. What is a sacrament? A sacrament is an outward sign of inward grace instituted by Christ himself. These are ways by which, seven ways by which Christ has given, by which though it is an outward sign, he gives to us directly a specific or inward grace. Is it just one? Is it two or three? Oh, we have seven. This is the beauty of the church. Whatever is outside, we have it in more. That is to say that it was all was not taken. But unfortunately, those who call themselves Catholics don't even know about it, don't care about it, are so trivial about it, or don't want to pro don't want to protect it. So today, I just I'm speaking to those who call themselves Catholics, or those who also are sympathetic to the Catholic Church, and will say that yes, these are also things that we could have. What are some of the other sacraments apart from? those that we know, traditionally baptism, communion, and confirmation. There is also what we call the sacrament of healing, physical healing, where we deal with the anointing of the sick, and spiritual healing, where we deal with the sacrament of reconciliation. This is the beauty of that, the church. Another one, we have the sacrament of vocation where you, are, you have the, the matrimony and then also you have the holy orders. I speak about holy orders very soon. Yes, it is on the screen, holy orders. It's an extra, it's something you don't find anywhere. Where the, 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 the church has been divided or is in two categories of the laity and the clergy. And among the clergy, there is also the orders. There is the deacon or the diaconate. There is the priest or the presbyterate. And then there's the bishop or the episcopate. These are the three degrees. And when one has been ordained a bishop, that person has the full apostolic authority. 
And as Jesus gave authority to the apostles, so every bishop has this in the fullness, in the full measure. So a priest, a bishop, is one who has the fullness of the apostolic mandate given by Christ. This is what makes Catholic and makes it different what others would want to call the extra. But I would want to say that which has always been, that has not been taken away. Feel proud as Catholic. Today is just to feel proud as Catholic. Now you see, there are pastors, are there in the Catholic Church, all the priests are part, I mean, all the priests who are in church charge of parishes and churches are pastors. If they are not, then they, are, they may be priests who are in charge of you know, offices. They are properly called, we call them pastors of souls. But over and above that, being a pastor, apart from the fact that they, you know, they will be breaking the bread, they're breaking the bread and, you know, feeding us with the word of God. Now they have to now feed us with the body and blood, which is an, un an, an unbloody sacrifice. It needs a priest. This is an extra that you don't find easily. Yet, those who call themselves Catholics are not proud of it, don't pray about it, don't talk about it, don't defend it. Today, I just want to be provocative. So ask the questions where need be. Okay, now, there are sacramentals. They are sacramentals. Oh, this is the place that I am just sad and sad. And I say, I am truly, truly sad. Because all you need to get from a sacramental, is, for how you need to get is to ask a priest to bless your rosary for you. But no, you want to have, you want somebody now to give you the picture of another human being or to give you a bracelet of some so-called something or to give you anointing oil or to, and yet you do not know that these, oh, why do we love things when they have been sold to us and we have been deceived about them. When you have it for free, sacramentals. Oh, time were passed when we were told that if you kept rosaries on your neck or you kept it in your hand or you had bangles and things like that, you were fetish. Today, we are being told, keep the picture of this man, keep the picture of this woman, keep the picture of that, where are we going to? And yet, Nobody is talking about these things. I will talk about it, especially for today. What are some of the extras? My dear friends, today I just want to be provocative. I just want you to feel proud. What do you feel that you have in your church that you are proud of? You tell me, that's all. We are not going to condemn anybody. That's not our job to condemn. Judgment belongs only to God. But I want you to share with me what you have in your church that you are proud to profess. Religious orders. We have not only priests and laity, but we have also what we call religious. This is something that it is, doesn't exist in most other Christian denominations. That's why somebody would ask, why don't the Reverend Sisters become priests or celebrate mass? And you see that this person is just comparing apples to mangoes and things like that because doesn't know what he's or he or she is asking about because the religious orders are special special categories of persons who have taken vows to live very closely in following the law it is a vocation and a calling if you like this is what. So it has nothing to do with what, whether one is a priest or whether one is a laity. This, uh, most of the religious, some are lay, some are priests, and they are just coming and they follow Christ more what, religiously or more closely. Now, again, sometimes I've been to certain places or crusades when they say that we are having altar call, and yet you don't find any altar there. And we have an altar in our churches, but nobody wants to go before the altar and feel called. Hey, is this, this is serious? We have an altar and probably maybe you have not seen it, but I have an altar in my church. And I say, yes, 
you are called to that altar. When people are marrying, where do they stand? They think they are standing in front of a priest. <laughs> That's very sad. Very, very sad. The priest, no, no, no. You're standing before the altar of God. Remember what Jesus Christ said, when you are bringing your sacrifice to the altar, he didn't even say when you are bringing your sacrifice to God. Because the altar is a representation of God himself. And Jesus acknowledges it. He says, when you are bringing your sacrifice to the altar, and you remember that somebody has something against you, leave it behind and go. Make peace. Yet, look at our churches. Many of us. You have an altar in your church but you don't even make use of it. Yet you are going to certain places to go and lie, lie down and only God knows. You have a sanctuary, grottos and things like that. We will not go there. My dear friends, today is an open discussion. What is it that you have in your church that you are proud of? Communion, is it a real presence or it is food? That's why some people will ask me, Father, why don't you give us the wine for us to take or the blood for us, uh, the, the, the wine or the, the, the wafer or things like that? My dear friends, you may choose to call it or see what you want to see. But for me, I see the real presence of Christ. What my eyes see may look like bread. What I taste may taste like wine. But what my faith tells me is that it is Jesus Christ fully present and therefore, it calls on me for worship. When I see the real presence, I go on my knees and I worship because God is with us. Jesus says to his disciples, to the people who had left, and he asked the Peter and Co, are you also going to leave? Peter says, where shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Then the last one just for today, so that we shall feel proud and talk about our faith. It is up to you to talk about your faith. I want you to talk also about your faith today. We have intercessors, living and the dead. We have not just intercessors who are with us. We have those who have died in the faith, who are interceding before us, as we read in Revelation chapter 5, verse 8, or verse 8, verse 5, any one of them. Turn it around. It talks about what? We standing before, or people who have died in Christ, standing before the altar of God, offering incense up to heaven. My dear friends, this is where I want to talk about for today. I am saying that there are no extras in the Catholic Church, but this is how God has given to the church. Because others have left it behind, today they seem to be look like extras. If it is the Bible, why would you be buying a Bible that is not up to you? Do you know about sacramentals? Do you go for service or for mass? Which sacraments do you frequent? Is it about just being a pastor or a priest? What is the teaching authority? Are you convinced about scripture tradition and the magisterium? Do you have an altar? Have you stood it before it? Have you made a vow before the altar? These are challenges that I talk about. What extras does the church have? I have presented some so-called extras, but I say this is what the Lord wants. I am going to open the lines right now for us. Share your faith, share yourself, be proud as a Catholic. And if you are not Catholic also, and you do not also believe, feel free, say it as it is. This is an open forum as it is. Nobody's going to condemn you anyhow. It's a free, it's, an, it's, it's a virtual world that is there. Please say your mind and be free. My discussion today has been to challenge us that there are other things, there are various other treasures of the church that a lot of us are not making use of. Look at a lot of now today, devotions are dying. Devotions are dying. Can we not go back to them? This is where I will end up. And I'll ask of your contributions and your questions are welcome. Thank you very much for now. My dear friends, you may send in your question contribution about your faith, what you are proud of as a Catholic, 
or if you are what you are not proud of as what the Catholic Church does, why not? Feel free to talk about it. Just tell us that this thing is really an extra, is not useful. I will be glad and I would respect you for that. But I see them really as necessary for myself. Okay. Now we have Bafo, Bafo Jehu. Please, Father, who is a Catholic? Who is a Catholic? Tell me, tell me. I don't know who is a Catholic. Okay. <laughs> I want us to defend ourselves. Tell me, tell me for today. <laughs> I don't know. Who is a Catholic? Tell me. Uh, a Catholic is a person who is, uh, has received the sacrament, sacrament of baptism. Okay. Very good. Yes. I would say that a Catholic is also anyone who belongs to the Church of God founded by Jesus Christ. So anybody, in fact, Catholic means universal. So everybody is actually Catholic by extension. But yet, everybody is Catholic because Jesus Christ died for everyone. So a Catholic, a Catholic Church, you see, when you see, you see behind me is the Vatican, the Vatican. And when you see the Vatican, you see that it is the, the, the dome, the dome that you see is the head. And the, there is an arm that is like that. It means that everybody is welcome into the church. So Catholic is everyone. We are only Roman because we, our headship is in Rome, the Vatican. But indeed, for us, we are Catholics. But for some people, because they are baptized, they have been incorporated fully into it. For others, because they have not been baptized into it, they are part of it, and they are, they are Catholics only by extension. Yes, mommy. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Share your faith. Be proud what you know. If you don't like what the Catholic Church does, just say it freely as it is. Nobody's going to question you or, you know, you know, make anything. Yeah. I put the things there. Yeah. Good. Anyone send in yes. Gloria, please. Gloria. Yes, Father. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. Mm. Well, I, uh, the little I want to say is a contribution, actually. That's very good. Yeah. I am a Catholic. I was born a Catholic, and I am proud, very proud to be one. Mm. And I don't hide it wherever I go. Great. I make everyone know that I am a Catholic and a proud one. Okay. Because I have tried it, I have tested it, I have, and I have testimonies. We as Catholics, a lot of us go to other places, so-called, um, they'll tell you they have seen the light. And I asked them, some of my friends, where is that light you are talking about? Because I don't get it. Mm. We have everything in the Catholic church, but we don't make use of it. That mm. is why we, we think that some people, or there is more power in some other places. I have been to grottos where um, so-called pastors and, or prophets from other churches come in with their gallons to fetch holy water, to go and sell at expensive prices to their church members because they know what is in the holy water. But we, the colleagues who have it for free, will not go and make use of them. That's the point. That's the sad reality. I, I, I have a friend, someone I know, who says he's a prophet and calls me one day and will be praying with me and tell me that, wow, I can see some fire in your room. Do you have an altar in your room? And I said, yes, I am a Catholic, so I have an altar in my room mm -hmm. and thrown by a priest. Mm -hmm. And he witnessed to it that, glory, I see fire in your room. I mean, not fire like fire, fire like Holy Ghost, something. Spiritual fire in your room. There's fire on your altar. And wow, I wish I could have this. I said, well, I am a Catholic. And I keep telling you that I am a Catholic. That is where the power is. If you like, come to the Catholic Church and you'll be a better prophet than you think you are now. I keep joking and telling him. So this is to say that there is power in the church if we make good use of what we have. But most of us do not make good use of what we have. That is why we think there is 
uh, some prophet or some pastor is powerful. Thank you. Good. You know, what you have just said is, I mean, is it just like when another person is, I could be in one other church and I would think that, oh, go to this other church and see. I mean, maybe not a Catholic church, but those who are, everybody thinks that somebody is better off. So the grass seems always greener at the other side. But wherever <laughs> you are, everybody just be what content with what where you are and help your people to grow and let us stop that spiritual you know shopping around everybody stay where you are and help just like marriages you think that when you leave and go for a new one it will be better well only you can judge that any other person please want to share, want to share today, share your faith, what you know, what are you proud of? Do we really have extras? Or I said that these have been things that have been taken away. So when we talk about them, now they begin to look like they are extras. What do you say about them? These are, the, these are things that has been there for so many years, but has been thrown away, has been left behind, has been ignored and left okay. Do I see any other person coming up? Yes. You can send in your, your contribution via the chat button or you can send it to us. Okay. Do I see Albertina? Yes, Father. <laughs> I have a story. <laughs> I make, was born. Make it, don't make it long. Okay. No, no, short. Thank, short. You. Thank you. I was born a Muslim. Okay, good. My parents are Muslims. My siblings have all gone to uh, their holy land in Mecca. Okay. And um, not only married a Catholic, a Catholic, but I became a more staunch Catholic than my husband. Wow. Because the religion of Catholicism brought me some joy, some spiritual upliftment that I couldn't get in the other side. Okay. And I've never looked back further. And I'm so proud to tell everyone that I'm a Catholic and there's joy in the Catholic church, if you believe. So wow. that's my contribution. Wow, wow, wow. I love the part that I, I am also, be, you have revealed to me this other aspect of you that I didn't know, okay, also. Yes, so yes, that's great, that's great. And thanks for sharing with us. And what we are saying is that there is it really extras? My dear friends, how come that so many people are buying Bibles, they don't even check before they buy? And when they buy it and they have those books, they don't even read them. We go for masses and we go for services and we say it is mass. We go for mass and we call it service. I mean, it's just like we don't have terminologies and we don't have vocabulary. Oh. Any other person to help us, please? Yes. Contribution, 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 yes. Yeah. I am Catholic and I am alive. I am Catholic and I am alive. Yes, dear friends. Yeah, if you don't share this, please tell us this thing about this Catholic, it is too weird for me. Nobody, I mean, it's just good. It will help somebody better his faith. No church is being condemned here. And we are not saying that the Catholic church is superior than anybody. We are just talking about what the church is and has, has always had, but unfortunately has been put in the back burner for today, uh, for, for some time now, yes. Any other person, I see lots and lots of people online and how I wish that you would be able also to share, to share without being afraid, without being afraid. What are you proud of? What are some of the so-called extras or things that we have left behind that you would love that to see us go back and do Sankofa, Sankofa. If you don't do the Sankofa, people are doing the Sankofa for us. So they are really doing the Sankofa for us. They are teaching us, they are, they are doing a lot of things that we used to do. Those things that we used to, anointing oil and all those things, you know, everything. When people, when, you know, you used to go for confession, 
and the people would, your, the priest will help you and would be in the sacrament. Today, you want a country. Okay, that's good. It's also fine. Good. Yo, I'm here. I'm waiting. Who is coming up? Edward, please. Hello, good evening, Father. Thank you very much. Thank you, Edward, for signing in and being part of it always. Yes, yes, uh, Father. Um, okay, so one of one of my proudest parts as being a Catholic is the fact that it's universal one. Um, when you travel or you find yourself even in you find yourself in a church, um, a Catholic church that is serving, that is believing the mass in a different language. That's right. You actually don't miss out because of the order of the service. It's universal. So mm -hmm. regardless of the language, you can follow it. Great. Whether it's in French or English. Great. Once you are Catholic, you can follow it. Unlike the other faith that we know. And also the fact that we can always call on our Mother Mary to in intercede for us. Okay. Yes. Great. That's the extra you love. Oh, this extra is like an icing that you just put on my cake for me. Because Absolutely. I have an anti intercessor. There are many, many people who are praying with me, but I also have my mother who is praying also with me. Oh, great, great, great. Okay. Do you have any other to add? Yes, Edward. Okay, Edward. Oh, we have George. Jira. Yes. <laughs> Yes, please share with us your oh, yeah. faith, or if you have a question or whatever. Oh, Father, it's a long story, but I just want to share with all of us something um, that, um, well, I probably was aware of it, but today was made even more aware. Um, you know, I, I went to Christ the King School, and then we, I try, even with busy work shadows, we try to go for afternoon mass. And today, I met about three or four of my schoolmates at afternoon mass. And um, one, whom, whom you all know, is, is, a, is an MP. Is, I, I can't mention his name. But he's an MP, he's, he's in government, and, and he was there. And I was like, but have you finally become Catholic? He said, oh, no, 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 he's, he's still not Catholic. I said, oh, really? He said, I saw, is this somebody's anniversary like you would always ask? And he said, oh, is this somebody's like supporting somebody who's celebrating a birthday? He said, no. Anyway, he said, look, so like the, all the other guys were standing around, so he, he couldn't really talk. So when they moved away, he said, you know, ever since Christ the King, ever since they used to send us to church in the afternoon or in the morning or on, on feast days, I felt something that even now, now that he's not a Catholic. And I observed him, he didn't go for communion. I said, now that he's not a Catholic, when he feels like cornered, feels he can only get peace during consecration. So wow. he has to come to mass. He now come, and he's not Catholic. He, I was like, but, so why don't you so when they become Catholic? Oh, you get it. It's just that feeling. And, and he went to a Catholic secondary school as well. So you see, so that whole, what I want to say with all this is I, I feel that as part of the things that we have that we don't treasure, that we, we are proposing or we want to come back or given the opportunity, we should all try and get it back. Is that, that Catholic um, upbringing, that Catholic um, training as children because, or as youth, because we, 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 in future, I think we fall back. A lot of us, for even we Catholics, fall back on it. And so I was really like, just to buttress what I'm saying. Good. Just Good. to buttress what I'm saying. People, other other people who are not even Catholic, fall back on it. Uh, like mm -hmm. Albertina said, I, I've made two and only child who are purely Muslims, and and even one became a nun, but the parents were fully Muslims, but they didn't stop her. Great. So I think if you ask what are some of the things we want to bring back or we want we cherish so much, I think the Catholic upbringing, the Catholic training, the, the, the Catholic education that that um, the church instituted or still has is, is a very good one that I think we should keep. Okay, thank you. And by the way, Auntie Albertina, uh, there's been lots of people who are sending in messages to you 
and uh, congratulating you, praying for you, encouraging you. And uh, you know, you have really touched people this evening by sharing your faith and uh, being, being able to tell us where you've come from, not because you have come from there, but at least being able to also tell us something that is very, very practical for today. So thank you, Auntie Agatina, for sharing. There are lots and lots of messages coming in on the question side. Wow, Father, thank you. Okay. My father blessed me to Bless be you. a good Catholic before he died wow. and died as a Muslim. He died as a Muslim? Yes. Wow. And I'm so happy that I am still a staunch Catholic. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have our brother six to online? Yes, Father. Okay. Do you have a question, contribution, or something to yes. give up our yes. thing? Yes, Father. I just want to share an experience. Yes. First of all, I want to say thank you so much for bringing our minds back to the fact that we have a lot in the Catholic Church that we ourselves many times we, we fail to see. I have an experience where I have a friend who is at this Pentecost church. And um, every October, this friend will call me and say, my brother, it is time for Rosary. Please pray for me. And many times he would also ask me to buy him a Rosary. And he told me what he has got through the praying of the rosary. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is not a Catholic. That tells us that we have things in the Catholic church that will help us grow. But we ourselves, many times, we do not know. So this evening, it has really brought my mind back to all the things that we have in the church as a Catholic for me, I am a Catholic and I am proud to be a Catholic and I am alive because there are people out there who always look for what we have in the church. People come to our church to come and have their quiet time pray before the Holy Eucharist. People who are not Catholics, but we ourselves, we do not find it necessary to come. So this evening, I just want to share uh, those of us who are online to know that yes, Catholic, we have everything and we should be proud that we are Catholics. Father, thank you very much for bringing our minds home. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Brother Francis Sixto's question is donated. Okay, great. Somebody is also saying that um, what I love as a Catholic is the ability to enter into a church and light a candle and pray also to my Holy Mother. Wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. And yet many of us, what I love one day is that when you are passing in front of a church, you stop and you make the sign of the cross. Something reminds you that there is a power beyond us. Okay, that's also beautiful. Another person says that, Question, Father, why don't the priest, why don't uh, we teach the word of faith as evangelization? Um, example, our priests are not dominating the local radio stations, if not lay ministers, and are not appreciated what um, we do. I think you want to say that, why are we not making a lot of noise also on the radio? Well, I mean, the part in the town, what we need is that we need Catholics, we need Christians to be faithful, you know, to, to that. But um, I think much as I agree with you, we must also be careful not to be doing don't go me uh, religion that, you know, we're trying to win souls and numbers into our churches. I think that is not the kind of religion or that we have been called to do or to, to propagate, okay. Somebody also says, um, we thank God for giving us this word on faith. Oh, thank you too. Another person says, please, which societies, which societies to join to be a strong Catholic or just, 
which okay, I think you want to say which societies do you can you join to become a strong Catholic? All the societies are good. All the societies are solid within the church. You can have about three. You I mean three categories. They are the society or the association, and you can join the the the, the ministries. You can join the ministries either to become a chorister or to become a mass server, to become a, an, an usher and things like that, or to become a Sunday school teacher or, you know, catechism or, you know, marriage counseling. These are all ministries. Then we also have the devotions, the lot of devotions that are there, devotion to St. Anthony, devotion to this and that. And then close to that is the, what, the movement the movement like the charismatic renewal, which is a movement, not a society that people would want to join. These are things. So it is there, everybody is there. You can make, you can, you can be there. You, it is a more than enough for us, okay. Is there any other person with a question that would want to help us, a question or a contribution? Somebody says, Father, thank you. Thank you to, thank you too for thanking me. Another person said, what I love being a Catholic is that I can make my quiet time before the blessed sacrament. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Okay. I'm wondering, sometimes I used to ask those of my friends who are not Catholics, I asked them, you say you believe in communion. And I asked, do you do devotion or adoration in front of the blessed sacrament? If you really say that you believe in the, uh, in your, the what you take is truly the body of Christ. Are you able to do devotion in front of it? Can you kneel before your communion and pray? Well, these are things that we have to ask ourselves. Today is being proud, being Catholic, and being alive. Somebody ask something, anything that does not sound good. What challenges you? What inspires you to be a Catholic? Or what does what prevents you from expressing your Catholic faith? These are not extras. They are there, but many of us have not known or we have not bothered about them. Is anybody talking? Is anybody talking now? I see lots and lots of people help us sign on, talk, encourage somebody. You are there. Yeah, you are there. Okay. Okay, somebody came up, he says, I am proud and humbled at the same time to be a Catholic. Even if asked in the next life, I will still choose to be a Catholic faithful. Whoa, this is solid. He says that when uh, the person comes back to life and, is, and has the opportunity to choose, we choose being Catholic again. Wow. But you know all these things, what is necessary that we have a relationship with Christ. We have a relationship with Christ and not just be Catholics and Catholics because church will not save you. But the community that you are in will enable you to be able to be saved by the grace of God. We are saved by the grace of God. Okay. Any other person? Well, I guess this is where time would permit us to be able to focus on for today. And I see no one coming up again to give us contribution directly. And the messages too have ceased. So my dear friends, okay. Did I see John Bosco, John Bosco. John Bosco, do you have a question or a contribution? Okay. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for making time. Next week, God willing, we will come into the end of the liturgical year. So we'd like to talk about the liturgical calendar, the liturgical calendar. So. Now that we have talked about the things that we have and the things that we don't make use of, we'll look at the liturgical calendar next week. So make time to be with us. 
on, on, on Wednesday, we will continue with our uh, OCD, obsessive compulsive, compulsive disorder. And this time we'll be looking at the compulsive behaviors. Thank you for coming. Remember every morning, six o'clock, there is morning devotion, morning devotion that we have. So please, it's at six o'clock Ghana time. If you are out of Ghana, please remember it is used Ghana time, please, okay? Now, somebody sent the last message. He says that we have our saints to pray for us. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. That's a saint to pray for us. So I pray and I ask Mother Mary now to pray with all of us because she will pray with us now and at the hour of our death. And you see, I believe when there is faith, I know that yes, so that we, she would intercede for us. And somebody will say that, Father, if you say the, the Hail Mary, is it also a prayer? Is it also a powerful prayer? Say so you have never tried it. Try it and you'll see. Shall we pray? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Gracious and ever living Father, I thank you for this day. I ask you, Lord, not only make us proud and humbled Catholics, Christians, but people who have true relationship with your son, Jesus Christ. Through the church, make us faithful servants. Bless us always to seek to do good and avoid evil. Help that we may assimilate the teachings of the Catholic Church so that all of us one day may join Christendom to be with your son in heaven. For we make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And, and, and with, with your spirit. spirit. And your mighty God bless and keep you all. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Whatever church that you belong, feel proud and be good in your church. If you are Catholic Amen. also, make sure that you are a proud Catholic who lives the true Catholic faith. God bless us all. And we we'll meet again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. I am Catholic. Bye-bye. I am alive. Bye -bye. I'm Catholic and I'm alive. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Catholic faithful. Thank you, Father.